when nowadays you go to China, uh, what we associate with, with religion, that is uh, temples, uh, masses, uh, celebrations, uh, uh, processions, uh, all it's visible nowhere. It's, uh, if you go to, 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 to Beijing, as we say nowadays, Peking, huh? If you really want, sure, uh, you can visit uh, one of the handful of temples that are still present in a city that had uh, more than 1,000 temples in, 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 the, in the old part of Beijing uh, before 1949. Or at that time already, of course, they were uh, in a very decrepit place. I remember uh, the famous American sinologist Arthur Wright, who was at Yale, who was one of the founders of uh, Chinese studies in America. You know, Chinese studies in America started rather late, only after the Second World War. Uh, in Europe, we had uh, an advance of about 100 years. Uh, that was an advantage, sure. But um, he remembered that when he was a student, a language student at the same University of of Peking, of Beijing University. Uh, at that time, in the 1930s, every Sunday, the holy day, the students were taken out in buses to go to the countryside to, uh, with big sticks to, uh, to destroy temples. So that was their, 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 their patriotic duty at that time. Um, China had to conform to some kind of Western image of a progressive modern state. And, uh, well, the Chinese have been working very hard and very successful. So when you go to Beijing now, uh, there's very little left, not only of the temples, but of the whole city in, in general. So where is religion? Where is it? Because human beings, I don't want to be uh, wax philosophical, but uh, human beings in some way uh, have always some kind of religion's uh, thought or need. So where is it? Uh, it's of course there, but it's not, it's not visible anymore. But it doesn't matter so much. Uh, we shouldn't sit down and cry. After all, it's no use. Huh? Uh, what is gone and gone, and when you, what you say in China is uh, if the old doesn't disappear, the new doesn't come either. So uh, <clears throat> uh, that's it. Moreover, as one of the founders of uh, Chinese studies, but also at the same time one of the founders of modern anthropology, he's very much forgotten. His name was Granet, Marcel Granet. And his books have not been much translated into English because they're very difficult. But uh, he is a name to remember. He said some very profound things, and he said that unlike in the West, uh, religion never became in China a separate part, a separate part of society. It's something they were, we're still grappling with now at this, at this, at this uh, conference. Every now and then a young scholar stands up and said, how can we divide politics from, from religion and economics from religion? And I said, you can't, because in China that was not a separate part. Because when you, you think about China and you think about Chinese society, and you learn a bit Chinese, then we can ask our Chinese friend here, Tang Ling, how do you say society in China? And she will say two words. She will say shi hui. And what means shi hui? Shi means the altar or the temple of the earth god. Shi. From olden times. That is the small, in, in Hong Kong or in places where that have less been touched by revolutionary fervor like Taiwan, you will find still everywhere on every street and every house here in Hong Kong has its small shrine for the earth god. The Shu. And Hui ne? Hui is the festival. It's the assembly of the earth god. There's no better explanation, no better way to see that what we call society, in fact, corresponds to a very profoundly religious notion, the church, the place where people congregate to worship what is in Chinese tradition the most fundamental of all worship, 
the worship to the earth as the producer of our food. Uh, give us, O oh Lord, our daily bread. You know, we, we also pray that kind of thing. You know, it, yeah, that it's all stage. So once you are not expecting something according to the American uh, notion of religion as something special, you know, for us, religion is special. Right? We have ordinary days, six days a week, and then we have Sunday, that is the Lord's Day. You know, because in, in Genesis it says that uh, God worked very hard for six days and then he had to take rest. Whenever you explain that to Chinese students, they start laughing, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's, it's not blasphemous. I mean, they, they're good natured, but they think that's funny. I mean, it is funny, of course. And uh, then we have churches that are open on Sundays and closed during the week because it's the house of the Lord. But no such thing ever existed in China because Chinese temples, where you can still see them, for instance, in Hong Kong, or now more and more in the Chinese mainland, not so much in Beijing, because the, uh, Beijing, of course, the, 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 the real estate is really, really expensive there now. It's, it's more expensive than in central Manhattan. So to find a place to build a temple, I mean, you must really dispose of a fortune. But in the city where I now live, in, in Fuzhou, in Central, we, we, I have been witnessing the building of several hundreds of temples in the last uh, five or six years. I mean, they're just pushing out of the ground. They, 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 they're coming up again. They have been destroyed, completely destroyed. No temple was spared. It's not only the Cultural Revolution. started already in uh, 19, 1898. I must say, very frankly, a little bit, with a little bit pushing of some Baptist missionaries, you know, who got had got some, some influence over the very young emperor there. Uh, they said, uh, we should do away with that. No good. But that was, I, I don't blame them. I mean, they thought that was for the best of the Chinese. Well, after 100 years, they come back. They come back very bigly. <clears throat> but uh, these temples, as in, in their architecture, they're just like any other Chinese house. There's no special... A church, a tower, bells, a, a gate. And so it, it, it's, 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 it's a, but because every Chinese house also always has a holy place, it's also a small temple. And every Chinese restaurant in the United States, too? Sure, because every there, there is also a small place for the earth god, and there is a small, small shrine for the mother of China. Guan Yin, uh, the goddess of mercy. So uh, religion is everywhere. It's nowhere, you don't see it, and in fact it's everywhere. And when you think of, you, you can think of religion as a way of system of belief. That's what's taught in our universe. But that's also a very Western notion, you know. Uh, this notion of, uh, in Chinese, Xinjiang. Uh, Chinese are very concrete people. They, they don't like to believe things. They want to know for sure. Zhi dao. So there's another word in Chinese, zhi dao, or zhi dao. That means I know the dao. That's, that's the original et etymology of that word, or zhi dao. Mei uh, some xinyang. No, no, it's not a question of something. But what you know. Uh, so the old books of, of Taoism, now very popular, the book of, of, of The Way and Its Power, or The Way and Its Virtue by Lao Tzu, or the other great book, like, like Zhuang Zhu. It is about what we call with a different, difficult word, epistemology. That is about what you know and what you not, do not know. It's about, about knowledge. And, and this kind of knowledge, you know, is still very wide, widespread. People say, oh, I don't believe. Then they mean, I'm not Christian. That doesn't mean that they don't hold opinions about the meaning of their life, their fate. 
about their affinity, about what they mean. Huh? This is what they mean. Huh? What, uh, I'm destined because of my, 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 my birth date and birth hour. I'm such and such a person because of my ancestral uh, transmission. I'm such and such a person. And uh, because of that and because of my karmic affinities, what the Yuan Fen. Huh? I meet such and such a peep person, so uh, when I love you, that is, was all destiny, oh, that whole notion. And then, of course, I should try to live according to my destiny, so I should have work according. All these things we associate with religion, I mean, they're very, 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 very present. Very, very present. So religion is nowhere to see, but it's everywhere to experience. And certainly, if I compare as a Westerner, and having been ex experienced as a child, and very, I taught at Sunday school, I went to Sunday school, then I taught at Sunday school, and uh, so on, I, I had, uh, Chinese are very serious, extremely serious about their belief. But their belief, of course, is very different. Or their belief system, if you want to call it, or their religious system is very different. 